All right, welcome to another edition of C Stand Up uh, Presents. I got Jeff Brown, one of the kids who was killing it back in the day, grown man, work. I know you got your own podcast, Higher Than Giraffe Balls, uh, and all of that. You killing it out of L.A. I see you. I see y'all, of your posts, you in, in, uh, in the circle with the big dudes. Uh, I do appreciate you yielding a little bit of your fame to us little fellas back at the crib. Come Thank on, you, sir. <laughs> my man, my man. Okay, so let's start this thing off, man. Um, a lot of the people who are in the scene now, they they don't really mm -hmm. do their history the right way. So that's another reason why I'm doing this. Introduce mm -hmm. them some of the cats who paved the way. You know, uh, sure, so sure. give us a good little uh, brief synopsis on how you yeah, started, man. you know, some of the highlights to that, bro. I'm not okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I left Chicago in 83 when I joined the Marines. Yeah. And uh, when I got out in October, it was uh, 11 degrees at the crib and it was 78 here in L.A. Okay. <laughs> I spent a few two Christmases in flip flops. I was like, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. let me go and stay out here. And I was always uh, fucking up in uh, in the in the core. I was always uh, one of my superiors said, "Brown, you know what the problem is with you is that uh, when other Marines see you, they think it's time to fuck off." I go, well, <laughs> No, Gunny, that's not my problem. That's y'all's problem. That's what yeah. it's, that's. You know, <laughs> like, I like. I'm like, hey. Yeah, I, I live it. <laughs> I, it. I got caught with the comedy bug because I used to do an impression of my sergeant major. He was this country dude, and I had his ass cold. Yeah, and I used to do. Yeah, I used to do stuff with my boys. We'd be standing around. I would do it. And one yeah. time we were standing outside the chow hall. I'm doing this shit. Everybody crying, leaning on cars, and all of a sudden they stop. I'm like, he right here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what did he do to you? He said, I want to see you in my office at 1300. <laughs> so I put my best camis on. I'm standing tall. Yeah. He goes, I've been in the Marine Corps for 26 years. That there was the best impression of me I've ever seen in my goddamn life. So I'll tell you what, man. I want you to do it tomorrow. And at the squadron inspection, it's going to be you instead of me. Oh, wow. So, I'm in a squadron of 300 people. Yeah. They all know me. That yeah. That brown over in avionics, they all know me. Yeah. So, I'm in the hangar, the big, uh, have you seen, uh, 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 uh what the fuck, was that, uh, uh, Heartbreak Ridge with, uh, Clint Eastwood? No. I don't okay. remember it. Anyway, there's these huge, they're the biggest wooden structures in the world. They, there are these uh, wooden uh, aircraft It's like plane, hangers. yeah, aircraft hangers. I know They're what that huge. is. Huge, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm standing inside of one of those and out on the flight line, mm -hmm. it's the whole squadron. Right. So I got the mic and I go, squadron, tear up! <laughs> and 600 boots come together. Yeah, wow. There are going to be some few, there are going to be a few changes around here. <laughs> a few color changes starting the day. <laughs> and I walk out. Yeah. And 300 people lose their shit. <laughs> and I was like, I got to do this. Yeah. I that, got to do yeah, that's And that. I just got, I got started. And um, a few yeah. years later, yeah, I, I won the Bay Area Black Comedy Competition. Yes. I won Star Search. Yes. I did every, in the 90s, you can't name a comedy stand-up show that, that I didn't want. do. Because yeah. I did them all. Yeah. I opened up for a gang of people. Right. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Drop some of those names you opened up for. That's one of my oh favorite my things to put these uh, people on. Uh, Luther Vandross, Ray yeah. Charles, Patty yeah. LaBelle, Woo! Chaka Khan, oh. Wind and Fire, Kenny G, yeah. Sinbad, uh, 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 shit, Anita Baker, uh, uh, The Alarm, The Cure. These are uh, uh, wow. Bands. So you talking yeah. like all audiences of 20 to 25,000 at times, bruh, right? Bruh, I, uh, the record is in Washington Park. I yeah. did stand up in front of 100,000 people. Oh, yeah. my God. Wow. Uh, that's, a, that's a moment, man. Yeah. I, uh, 
the, my my career went backwards. Usually, mm. dudes go from clubs to that. Yeah, I didn't. I went straight from uh, having forty five minutes. Yeah, of clean material. Yeah, to people going, I want that dude in front. That he's hilarious. I want him in front of me. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I broke Sinbad's record for the number of colleges in a year. Wow! And, um, wow! So yeah, I did all of that stuff first. Yeah. Before I did mine went backwards. So when it came time to start doing clubs, when I started to cool off, yeah. Um I was I, I had, which is why I didn't do much television. I started writing for television because I wasn't in front of the screen, the, the yeah, the camera a lot. Right. Because remember, bro, I grew up on 60th and Damon. <laughs> okay. Golly. I made I, I was Please. routinely making more money in a week than yeah. any man in my family made in a year. Yeah, yeah. So uh the 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 tv game is okay y'all gonna have me read for this thing i might get mm -hmm. or i can go open up for ray charles at three thousand dollars a night for three months yeah I'll see you when i get back all <laughs> right back. Exactly. and i had way too much see you when i get back yeah to develop a television career right 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 absolutely man i remember man that you know, I didn't, I wasn't privy to know all the steps of your career, but mm -hmm. when I saw you, I, I know you used to do this thing where it was almost like an opera, uh, opera singing thing. Is that joke? Hood. Say it again. Opera from the hood. Opera from the hood. Boy, that was a hook right there. Everybody was like, Thank oh you, my God, you had dudes half stealing that at the open mics and all types of shit. I was like, this dude is killing, killing. Thank oh you. my God! <laughs> well, I'm a, uh, I I came to this conclusion a few months ago. Yeah. Um, I can't write for anybody who has a house bigger than mine anymore. I heard that without I, getting paid for it. Oh no! no oh, well, excuse me. That's the only way I do it. <laughs> okay, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Wait yeah. a second. Hey no. man, some dudes have lines. They like, I don't want to work with you know whatever. But I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, as in, uh, my once, yeah, once uh, the road start to cool off for uh, uh, for opening for acts for yeah. me. Yeah. I said, okay, I'll start doing clubs, and I had never developed an audience for myself. Okay. I was always in front of somebody else's audience. Yeah. Yeah. And hoping so, they would remember you, but most yeah, of the time, exactly. Yeah, and I they never really, I never really honed honed in on that. Right. So, who else was like, look, yeah, I mean, you got great credits, but we'll pay you fifteen hundred in air. Right. I was like, okay, yeah, I, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. I can't yeah. Okay, for the whole week. Mm -mm, no, not gonna do that. So, um, I started writing for people. Yeah. And, Who'd you write for? Uh. Let me try to do it in order. Uh, Sinbad, yeah, Steve Harvey, okay, uh, Cat Williams, George oh. Lopez, and D.L. Hughley. I just stopped. Wow. I just stopped writing for for D.L. Uh, last year. I wrote okay. uh, on two of his specials. And yeah, I remember. I remember like when we talked a little while ago, maybe before the before around the uh, pandemic, you had been mm -hmm. on his show. You were on DL's show or something. Yeah, like that. I, was writing, I was on that show and writing for that show. Yeah, 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 man. Listen, bro, that's so fascinating, so dope. So, what do you think? You said it twice already. You said you started to cool off because I remember you was hot as fish grease. I mean, mm -hmm. when when you would come to the All Joe Society set and do that uh, thing from the hood, then we saw it on television, all that. What made you cool off? The f do you think if you look back? Well, at those sure. Well, well, um, nobody, nobody opens for another act forever, with the exception of Tom Dreesen. Who opened up for Frank Sinatra for twenty years? That's my guy, man. I love Tom. Greasy? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, bro. Absolutely. Greasy talked doubt. to me when I was a young comic. He was the yeah. first dude that I was like, uh, and, and that was a uh, okay, another subject. Um, okay. We'll get to <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no uh, um, after a while, after a while, no matter how much uh, um, you do. In any lane, 
that lane is going to run lean. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was, uh, I also had kids that I was missing shit. Mm. They wasn't missing nothing financially. Right. But, but emotionally, I was, I was missing shit. Yeah. So after a while, that shit just naturally cools off. Yeah. You can't name one dude, no matter how big the tour or how big the artist, mm -hmm. and that dude, especially if he has his own aspirations, does forever. Right. So, I, I mean, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And then, uh, so you know started. So let me summarize that. You, huh? Okay. So let me summarize that. You were opening up for these incredible music acts. And yeah. your star was shooting up some of it off of their uh, coattail, some of it off of your coattail, but you was not mm -hmm. marketing or not uh, holding on to your own branding well enough for those yeah. people to jump on your tail. But your career was going too good for you to stay on fr in front mm -hmm. of them. Well, my well, uh, uh, my bank account was fine. My bank it was like, uh, uh, and I was never stupid with my money. Okay. So when it started to cool, I was like, okay, uh, I never built too big a beast to feed. That was the right. number one thing. Okay. I, I tell comics this. You need to minimize the shit that's due on the first. <laughs> right. Because uh, uh, yeah. we don't make it. We make money like this where, uh, you know, dudes, it's sometimes you could call me and go, Jeff, I need to hold three grand. Mm -hmm. oh, look here, I got you. What's your cash at? Right. Then there's other times. I'm coaxing my neighbor's dog over because I got the grill just right and I'm going to eat this <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Save some money, huh? Come on, bro. Come on. It's I, that ride. Yeah, so, I've, been, I've been there. It's an up and down like that, man. So um, so with me, uh, me and you, Facebook friends, man, I get a chance to glimpse all of the stuff that you do. Well, not all, but a good amount of the stuff that you have absolutely put out there and, and yeah, post, yeah. man, and and I've seen some of the controversial moments uh, that you have on your podcast or that you might be interacting with other cats on, on their podcast or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love it, man. I love it. And uh, I know this might be something you in Hollywood, man. Let me let me if you don't mind, because I asked you before. Right. What's, what's, up, what's your uh, take on this Chris Rock special and, the, uh. and everything around it right now? Okay, a a um, I think that Chris Rock is a master of <clears throat> j just a, a a a master joke writer and a master performer. Um, as I watched his special, I think that it was rushed. I think that as a writer and as a comedian, when I listened to the jokes right up until Will, mm -hmm. they all left meat on the bone, which is something Chris don't do. Mm. Okay. Chris gets five writers, pays them very, very well, mm. and they help him write his special. But okay. because of this Oscar shit yeah. and the timing of, mm -hmm. I don't think he had the time to do this right. Number two, uh, a special, a, a a a special is not an hour of jokes. A special is an hour of special jokes. Yeah. He didn't have time to make the rest of those jokes special. Mm. And if you look at his the 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 uh the way Chris Rock tells jokes, watch Bring the Pain. Yeah, one of the great. Besides, oh, come on, man. Besides yeah. having incredible material. Chris refuses to let the energy ball hit the floor. There you go. There From you the go. time he gets on stage right. to the time he leaves. Right. Concept set up, I'm walking. Stop, yep. punchline. Mm -hmm. Concept set up, I walk. Stop, punchline. Damn, I didn't even see the science on that part of it, man. You're such a fucking surgeon of this shit, bro. Yeah, I love man. it. I love it. it. Yeah. It's, it's Go ahead. This yeah, yeah. Pay me. Absolutely. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I may be bringing it to Chicago 
Okay. Uh, what I am going to bring on the road is something called Uncle Jeff's Comedy Kung Fu School. Okay. All right. I, uh, uh, I do an hour, uh, I mean, a, a, a week intensive yeah. with comics who want to learn how to write better. I can't okay. teach you to be funny. Right. But I can teach you to teach you to be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it, bro. Keep me in the loop on that. So, uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I think that, and, and this is no knock at Chris, uh, I don't agree with some of the politics because, because then again, a lot of people who don't know me, mm -hmm. this was, a, this was an issue when I was younger. Uh, and it used to break my heart that black people don't love me. Like I love them. Okay. That I, I was always, uh, uh, considered <clears throat> a sellout or, uh, 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 because I worked mostly mainstream rooms because I had mostly mainstream gigs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. because I worked a lot of places, a lot of brothers couldn't, and yeah. all it had to do with is that I wasn't lazy with the pen. Right. And they jealous on some BS shit. They they could always go through that. Well, yeah. Well, that's that comes from a lack of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has what I am supposed to have. Right. Because right. usually when you listen to a comic talk about another comic, he is either saying that other comedian is funnier than me mm. or more successful than me because. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like what you can put that in front of whatever they just said. Oh, that nigga's a hat. Right. Oh, that nigga. That nigga stealing. Oh, that that nigga ain't that funny. Oh, that nigga. That nigga got hookups. Oh, that mm. nigga. Uh, get, yeah. <laughs> all of that. All you saying yeah. is that's why you don't have what he has. Well, the stealing part. I don't know if that fits perfectly. If you'd love to break that down for me, because you know. um, Stealing is stealing in our profession. And if you're taking like a dude is on stage, he's killing it in the crowd, but he's stealing and I'm calling him out on it and I'm jealous of it or I, I don't uh, have self-worth in that or what? Okay, hey, let's, 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 let's explore that. Yeah, let's hey man, I'm, that I'm getting an echo. I'm getting a big echo on your side. Did, you, did something change? No, nah, okay, I haven't that. changed nothing. I'm going to bring my computer, I mean, my phone's away. <laughs> I don't okay. have it on anything. Are you still echoing? Uh, I'm not echoing yeah, at all over here. A little bit. Um, Let me see. Maybe I move further back from the... Let's see. How's that? <laughs> testing, testing. Let's just walk through it because it's yeah. not being recorded on my Ooh, side. Shit. Yeah. yeah, it's bad now. Let me oh. see. Well, let me Hello? Check. One, two, one, two. How is it now? Is it Hold still... on. Let me come out. Let me... Check one two one two one two. Yeah, it's in the broadcast somewhere. Okay, oh. you wanna uh, you want me to? I could hang up and call you right back. It'll give us more uh, time if that's cool with you. Okay, let's, and then let's, I could just. That. All right, let's... I'm gonna do that right now. I'm cutting this one off. All right, and then give okay. me another link. Yep, about to send it right now. Okay. All right. So we okay. were we were uh, talking about uh, you had made a statement that implied. That when somebody speaks bad or speaks up on another circumstance between comic to quam comic, mm -hmm. it's really a reflection on how they feel about themselves. If I may summarize what you're saying, so when hey, somebody well, when somebody speaks up on a comic stealing, which seems to be you know one of the things that comes in and out of our profession quite often, how does that fit that scenario? Um, well, it depends upon what you consider stealing. Okay. Uh, well, dude, you you have to you have to define this because it's your, really your state. Uh, you okay. Say. Well, well, it depends upon how one considers stealing. Okay. Uh, um, to me, um, you can't steal a premise. Okay. You can overuse a premise. You can, you can. Uh, uh, a lot of comics who complain about stealing are complaining because. Somebody, uh, uh, I've heard it said, well, you took my picture and colored it your way. Well, what if you both bought the coloring book from Walgreens? Right. Okay. So conceptually, I hear you. And therefore, so, I, if we were to summarize it, then it does fit. Because it's like, he, he right. had the same premise. He had the same type of joke. And he getting better laughs. And here's a, here's, a, here's a, a common hair weave joke. Okay. Hair weave stank. 
right. Okay. And then you can go, and then if that's what if that's the only place you're gonna go, yeah, then that's different than if we're gonna give you there's no women in your family named Bernice, right? Right. Okay. Uh, Aaron has an auntie Bernice that wears a weave too long. Right. Now, if you tell me a story about your aunt Bernice, yeah, and a nigga steal that and make his aunt his aunt Jackie, yeah. Now everybody know that's Aaron's story. Yeah. That's different. Okay. And you talking about a dude, bro? I'm thinking very seriously, and all I'd have to use is YouTube. Uh -huh. To cut together something called "You Tell Me," with right. stars, yeah, <laughs> that have stolen from me, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, and I get paid. I get like, look here, you want me to help you write? Here's what it costs, right? But instead, and... they just fil they just filtered it, uh, steal it from you, and then just walk away like they didn't do that. Now, here's what I really believe about stealing stand up. Yeah. Okay. Stand up gives us the ultimate license, bro. How many other jobs are there where it is your job to tell the truth the way you see it? Okay. To share your thoughts. Right. If I have to use another, another nigga's thoughts, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I told you. I honor saying. his thoughts over my own. Right. I could right. never do that. I right. could never honor what you are saying is that in this moment, <clears throat> the laughter of these people is more important than my own art and integrity. And if mm. you are a joke thief, I hope you're watching this. That makes you a fucking coward. <laughs> my you're man. a coward. <laughs> yeah. I That's heard that. Cowardly. Fully understood, man. Fully understood. So you smoking on that pipe over there, man. Tell us a little bit more about your podcast because it's entertaining to me. When I get a chance to check it out, I'll be My like, man. these niggas do be <laughs> uh, I do a I do a podcast called, I do two of them. Okay. On Sunday, on, on, on Wednesday, I uh -huh. do one called Giraffe Balls, which by yeah. the day, I used to get high as Giraffe Balls. And talk right. About whatever. Right. I've cycled off of weed since then. Okay. And I now smoke mullet. Mullet. Uh uh. In M U L L E I N. Mullet. It is mullet. thousands of years old. Okay. It is a lung healer. It is a brain stimulant. Wow. And the, and the reason that you don't know about it is because it's so fucking cheap. Okay. It's a. Uh, uh, I've had COVID, but three times, three, four times. Uh, and I shake it off, and. Mm. Uh, it was my brother, uh, who lives, who still lives in Chicago. Shout out to Chris, uh, that turned me on to Mullen, and I started oh. smoking it and drinking it as a tea. Okay. And uh, I tell, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take you on the ride. It's gonna be worth the trip. First time I got COVID, bruh, it <laughs> had me down for a minute, and I'm a I'm plant based. Yeah. So uh, uh, I do remember that. Um, when it left, it left a feeling in my lungs all the time. I was walking around. You you ever have a uh, water or something you drink go down the wrong way? Yeah. I was walking around constantly feeling like that. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't shake it. Mm. And my brother was like, "Dude, start uh, smoking Mullen. I'm smoking that now." My brother's a, a marshal. He got shot twice in the chest uh, a few years ago. Uh, you know, oh, he's a fucking cowboy. He still he teaches Krav Maga and he teaches a concealed carry class out in Franklin. Okay. Uh, um, bruh, I started smoking it and drinking it, and in about a month, come on, nigga, we from the South Side. You know what hog head cheese look like? Yeah, absolutely. One day, uh, you know how you hack up Slim? Yeah. I hacked up a gang of gray shit. That damn. looked like hog head cheese. Oh man. And since then, bruh, I swear by it. I swear by it. Really? M Mullen. So yeah. where do you buy it? Like natural okay. stores or whatever? Nat there you go. Uh natural store. Um uh, look for a whole, you know, you probably gonna have to go over on the north side to get it. Uh 
Okay. Look for it. <laughs> just, just look up Mullen. Branded by Mullen, M U L L E I N, in Chicago. It's somewhere. Okay. If not, if not, here's a free plug. They don't give me shit. They're out here. Yeah. It's a store you can order it from out here called Wild Terra. W I L D T E R R A dot L A. Wild Terra dot L A. Okay. Is where I, I, I buy mine. Uh, yeah. And you know, at the same place I'm getting they they sell all kind of great herbs. Uh yeah. I'm, I'm so does it give you a does it give you a buzz or you just uh smoke it for the for the for the uh uh house, no house but, yeah oh, oh bro it gives you a mild buzz yeah but more than that what else it does with regard to your brain is it uh how can I put this do do you fuck with cars at all? Yeah, I, I, I do my own it? car work. Uh, work yeah. Oh, damn, bro, you know about nitrous, right? Yeah, absolutely. Nitrous goes into the the cylinder. Yeah, and it sparks it. Uh, extremely close. It's extremely yeah. cold. Yeah, which makes the charge dense. Yeah, and then as soon as it hits the atmosphere, its its chemical properties are NO two, which means it has an extra oxygen molecule. Okay, it lets loose that extra oxygen molecule. So right. now you have more air yeah. than you put in. Right. The same thing with mullet. Mm. When it reaches gray matter, it yeah. releases more oxygen molecules. God damn, that sounds... So it makes your brain move faster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, does it make your thoughts race or does it give you a stim uh, uh, an extra oxygen uh, molecule and, and helps you grow mentally? Because, boy, that's, uh, some of that stuff is scary when you start talking about uh, changing your brain uh, interaction. You know, well, schizophrenia uh, and all that stuff kicked the, out. The, uh, yeah. the, the truth is uh, that uh, um, not only, hold on a second, uh, not only does pork, red meat, mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. processed food, all of those alter brain chemistry. Okay. All of them. Well, uh, I, I hear you on that. Sugar yeah. and cocaine are made of the same, are, are, are about a molecule or two apart. That's right. Um, I can't, this is, uh, uh, I got an auntie who, you, who used to give me shit about smoking weed. Like that was gonna kill me while she was pulling a ham hock out of a microwave. <laughs> I ain't go what? The, the, you, <laughs> so uh, I don't. I, um, once I once I have an idea, my yeah. my mind is like a coliseum. You've seen three hundred, right? Yeah. I mean, no, 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 Gladiator. Uh, I I I believe I have. That's kind of older though. Right? The Russell Crowe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my mind is like a Roman Colosseum. Okay. Where ideas must fight to the death to stay. Mm, okay. Uh, wash your ass every day is undefeated. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go see the dentist every three to six months is undefeated. Right. If I have a new idea, don't eat red meat. Well, that had to draw its sword. Yeah. And I started to study. And the more I studied, the more I understood that you are not eating your your uh, grandfather's nah. steak. You're not even eating your father's steak. Wow. Okay. That idea died. Yeah. When it died, it was replaced by don't eat red meat, don't eat chicken, don't eat fish. Yeah. And if I go back on those ideas, that means that metaphysical zombies are now running it. It's a metaphor. If that if that's a dead idea, why is that zombie walking around in your head? If you know better. Oh man, this is this is so stimulating, bro. Uh, let me refocus a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you were uh, you were talk, starting to talk about your second podcast, and we kind of drifted off. Oh yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> no, it's all good. My second my second po podcast is yeah. called the First Church of Holy Shit. Okay, I haven't even seen that one. Now. Oh, bro, go check out. Go to Jeff G E O F F space yeah. T E E V E E no spaces Jeff TV. 
Uh, uh, com somebody, or dot TV? Or so dot, on YouTube. Search Jet Oh, TV. on YouTube. Okay. All right. Uh, somebody fucked up and told me God was everywhere. So I pray from here. Save me 10%. I never miss a game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, the other way I like to put it is when people <clears throat> come over, you can save 10% on your soul insurance by switching to don't go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't... Uh, uh, I, I speak about God without a name. Okay. Because in order for God to have a name, you have to believe a man. Mm. Some man, I don't care what, you, the, the, Jesus, Allah, Jehovah, Zoroaster, Dionysus, Buddha, whatever you call God, some mm. man told you. But you don't have to believe a man to believe right. that God exists. Right, absolutely. So I don't give a fuck if you call him a bag of donuts. That's not the point. Yeah. The point is spiritual enlightenment. And and higher thinking, and that's what that show's about. Awesome, awesome, man! I'd love to. I'm gonna check it out oh, uh, bro, because bro, come through, yeah. Because uh, a lot of the times, man, we I do have uh, a lack of intellectuals around me, and uh, I have a theory that obviously, in my mind, there's no man sitting up in a big chair that calls itself God, watching over everything. I think it's an energy source uh, that we call the universe that uh, on some levels uh, is what we small-minded people consider to be God, but it's really just a different in a life force, energy force thing, not a being sure. for sure. sure. You know what I mean? So in well, uh, conversations like that, man, I, or at least watching other brothers have it, stimulates some things that I'm, I'm definitely going to check out, man. I'm going to check out, bro. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, uh, so that's yeah. awesome. Say the name of it again so it'll be on video. I mean, you know. It's the First Church of Holy Shit. There you go. We're gonna, and then when you go to YouTube, what are we searching? Uh, Jeff TV, G-E-O-F-F -F, space T-E-E-V-E-E -E -E, no spaces. There you go. Yeah. All right, so what, what, okay, so what, what, uh, so those are your main two projects right now, right? I know no. you, uh, no, no. Okay, well, cool. Give me that. Um, so, what's up? Um, <laughs> are you are are you familiar with uh, comics by the name of Thomas Ward, Spanky Hayes? I know Howie Spanky Bell. Hayes. Yeah. I, oh, come on, Howie, my guy, man. Yo. Okay, when you get a chance, yeah, look up the other level, the space O T H A level. Okay. Uh, these brothers are. Uh, it ain't no secret now. They have a, a deal with Universal. Yeah. Uh, to produce a singing comedy album. Okay. Four, four of those tracks I produced. Um, mm. I was a, a a drummer long before I was a comedian. I like to say okay. that uh, comedy is the girl I cheated on music with. Ooh. Okay. So uh, she is a brutal bitch. Boy. Uh, comedy uh, is a brutal bitch. But go ahead. Is, I ain't mean uh, uh, Yeah, we can get into we can get into who she is in a minute. Yes, yeah, uh, let's do that. <laughs> so, um, one of the tracks that I produce for them is up online right now, up on YouTube right now. It's called "Get the Fuck On." Uh, <laughs> okay, it's a parody of "Float On." Okay. <laughs> um, I. I am also working on my own comedy album. Yeah. Uh, and I'm getting back on stage. Um, I wrote a one hour crime drama uh, that I'm in the process of selling. Okay. So um, I once had a, con a, a conversation with the creator and I was like, how come you haven't, I mean, just this, this is how I talk to the creator. How come you haven't given me everything I'm supposed to have. Mm. And bro, like I'm talking to you, the voice said, because you haven't used everything I've given you. Damn. Ooh. My man, I love that. That Yeah, I'm going to have to give me some of that mullet, boy. <laughs> oh, I also, also am coming out again with uh, my sayings on t-shirts and mugs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you better come. You better coin that as high as giraffe balls, boy. That shit is it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, bro. I, you got I, cats. I, I don't know if you. I don't think you have, uh, originally are the only person who ever said it, but you got it's cats saying that shit more often than not. Now. Right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, 
I think I get shadow banned on YouTube a lot because it's a lot of cats I go place and they, yo, Uncle Jeff, blah, blah. Yeah. Your words have really encouraged me. They really helped me. Um, speaking of that, uh, I'm, I also have a book I'm working on. It's called Jeff's Brownies. Okay. And, uh, uh, nuggets to get you through the day. No. And, no, I love so, it. And I have to do it. It's, it's tough, bro. Uh, because I'm I'm high I'm a high functioning autodidact. Uh, okay, that word is out of my college dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> autodidact. That just yeah. means a lot of the things that you do are self taught. Okay. Okay. Like a... if I if I pick up something and I yeah. do it for an hour, it looks okay. like I've been doing it for six months. Right. Right. If I do it for two months, it looks like I've been doing it for ten years. Love because it. Because I I just learn I learn really I learn and I read extremely fast. Yeah. And um. Uh, because of that, um, shit comes to me, and uh, thank God for the voice recorder yeah. that I'm also sharing with AI, whether I like it or not. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah i I have to I have to um, honor the gifts that the Creator gives me. I have to honor them. I can't leave them under a rock. I have to I have to honor. Them. Yeah, yeah, that's hot too. Speaking of production, man, have you uh, linked with Shay Shay anytime or y'all were y'all because y'all the same era, you know what I mean? Y'all were man, man. Yeah. Cause he he was uh he came to town uh creating some shows and stuff, man. I don't know if y'all linked up and build something we did. together. But... Actually, I came back to, to uh Chicago for a minute. Yeah. Me, him and Duran Howard. Right. Uh, we were working with a comic. Uh shout out to Johnny Bratzmeen. Uh, uh, he was on uh, Kevin Hart's Heart of the City. Okay. Um, <clears throat> working with him in an intensive weekend of uh, writing, how to write, how to perform stand up, and uh, yeah, Shay Shay, my man, bro. But but yeah. Shay Shay was good friends with my best friend in comedy. Rest in peace to James Hanna. Oh man, I wanted to mention him when you start talking about. Uh, you know, those transitions into writing and stuff, because that dude was so cold, man. Uh, yeah. You, you, the dude I miss the most in the world is James Hanna. Wow. That's me a big James, Me and James got tight. Yeah. Because uh, remember when James wrote on every episode of the Steve Harvey show. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I, I knew. I was proud to know him back then. Yeah, you man. know, me and him kind of knew each other a little bit in high school and okay. everything was good. I talked well, to him like two weeks before he died too. We had talked yeah, on the phone. Well, well, his his uh the Steve Harvey show used to be taped right across the hall from Vibe. Yeah. So I was writing for that show. He was writing for this one. We had met back when I way back when I did a show called Comic Justice. Yeah, I remember Comic Chicago. Justice. That was that was taped at all jokes. Yeah. Right? Uh no, it was taped at the funny farm. Okay. Well, one of them got, one of them shows like that got taped at all, Just, But go ahead. Y'all met each other. And then we was like two peas, bro, because of our acerbic points of view. Mm -hmm. We didn't let niggas off the hook. Right. And we used to stand back to back after comedy club nights and let niggas have it. <laughs> right. From the intellectual standpoint. That was my nigga right there. I actually yeah. stopped, uh, I, I uh, shout out to Charlie Mack. I stopped Charlie Mack from tying James Hanna's arms in a knot one night. Because <laughs> the, the nigga used to have a bit called Guess Who's Gay? And it was fucking hilarious. And he did it with about Will Smith yeah. while Charlie was in the audience. Really? Yes. And I had met Charlie while I was out on the road with Anita Baker. Okay. And uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Patty LaBelle. I, okay. I was out on the road with Patty Bell. Yeah. And Charlie's from Philly. Philly. Patty's from Philly. Uh, uh, we we hooked up. We was cool as a fucking fan. And uh, James was trying to double down on what he said. Yeah. And bro, dude got dude got Charlie to take it Mack, first. Nigga, nigga, <laughs> Charlie Mack is was at the time six seven, two sixty or seventy, no fat. With a fist this big. Damn. This is fucking fist look like a ham. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, let me step in here. I said, Charlie, please. 
please don't beat up my friend. Please, <laughs> I can't do what I'm gonna do, man. I can't. I ain't nigga. I ain't jumping in. This is asshole, but I'm not. I'm just okay. I just don't want to see my friend get beat up. Yeah, not on that level. <laughs> please, Charlie. Please don't beat up James. Please. Now is this guy? Because I don't know who he is. Is he Will Smith's bodyguard or something? Oh, or right. Right. Uh, uh, you you know when you watch in uh, 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 the Fresh Prince come on in West Philadelphia, born yeah. and raised. You know the dude that picks Will up and spins him around. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Charlie Mack. You know, Charlie Mack's the last one out the limo. Yeah, the, yeah. Charlie okay. Mack. Look up Charlie Mack. Just Google Charlie Mack. Will Smith. Everybody okay. knows the, 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 from oh, Barack Obama down. Everybody knows Charlie Mack. Okay. All right. Charlie Mack ain't no joke, bro. Yeah. To this day, you don't want none. Yeah. Well, you know, James Hanna had a had a uh, talent. For uh, putting itself in that situation verbally, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. I remember that a lot of niggas yes. wanted to fight him for a bunch of different reasons. Now that made him who he is, because he would tell you no matter what the consequences are, yeah. the truth. And, and I, I told James that was one of our our fallouts. Yeah, uh, because uh, God bless the dead, James uh, wound up being exiled from Hollywood. Yeah, it was Not a big story, man. Go Not ahead, because tell of his talent. Side. Not right. because of his talent. Because of his mouth. Yeah, without a doubt. And I told him, I said, dude, if I get the Jeff Brown show, mm -hmm. yours is the first number I'm calling. Right. Yeah. If if uh uh if it's me, nigga, you supposed to tell me the truth like that. I right. expect you. You will fail me if you don't tell me the truth like that. Right. What you are doing is exposing these niggas for the insecurities they left home to come here for in the first place. Right. And they the ain't, truth, they they can't handle it. You do not own the truth, James. You don't own the truth. It's not yours to flash as a badge or wield as a sword. You can't be doing that. Right. He didn't not, in, not in Hollywood and you trying no. to eat. Yeah. No. And and it would James worked with the best. James worked on Damon's show. James mm -hmm. James was steady working. James wrote for Chris Rock. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, just the Steve Harvey uh, thing was so um, big for everybody that was back at the crib watching him. You know, and then uh, I think he, actually, you know, he kind of influenced a whole, with that. Um, was that <clears throat> you were not not only his two face, but there was a joke that everybody stole from him. It was uh, it was the one that um, you yeah. think you you might be ghetto. Yeah, you might be ghetto if so. Everybody took their angles. You might be a redneck if you might be a beaner if. Well, no, because... redneck redneck came first. Uh, you sure? Because yes. I, I, I am absolutely it. certain. Okay, well, I my story. The story that I had heard was that Jeff Foxworthy stole it all for him. You heard that wrong. Okay. I respect that. Yeah. But anyway, the shit used to crush. And and so Well, and here and there you go. Let's bring up let's bring that up. Yeah. You might be blank if not even does Jeff Foxworthy own that. Mm -hmm. The You Might Be If came out in the 60s. Right, okay. He was the first one to put Redneck in there. Okay. James was the first to put Ghetto in there, and here's how James didn't steal from Jeff Foxworthy, because James didn't use any of Jeff Foxworthy's examples. Yeah, okay. These I mean, I, I, I don't care either way, because my, right. my angle on that part is this. Inside the room that you're in, your job is to entertain those people who paid to see. Sure. I'm not saying that there's a main vein of theft. You know when your soul has you stealing. But I've seen comics that were struggling on stage and they reached to someone they knew, Joe, used it to get themselves back on track. Uh, I think one, that's part of the game. It's ugly. It's like getting a hooker with with STDs and still fucking because you wanted that nut. It's a bad seed in the thing, and it shouldn't happen, but it does happen. Sure. 
I give people the leeway of saying, all right, but if your whole set, you know, like they kind of uh, accused Carlos Mencia, if your whole set is a bunch of everybody else's jokes, and you know it, now you're a thief. You know what I'm saying? So well, there's some uh, leeway in there, I think. Using somebody else's joke in a pinch points to only one thing that I can see. Unprepared. A complete lack yeah. of preparation. Yeah, that's all. The, the six P's. Proper ref, proper preparation prevents piss poor, poor performance. Exactly. That's as simple as that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's what, you know, that's what I've seen. That's what I forgive. But when it comes to uh, people truly stealing, I never thought James Hanna was a thief. I didn't even, I actually heard the story backwards and accepted it because everything else to do, Bill was so original, so powerful. Even the shit that I might have seen him try on a Wednesday or something that didn't go over well, that he, he kept building on it or he left it alone was fucking genius at times. You know what I mean? He probably got some joke books in his house right now that his mama or sister got in a fucking box somewhere. That could make a motherfucker rich if they get it and read it right, you know, because the dude was just that good, man. Y'all whole, <laughs> y'all whole little little high school level, y'all was like the uh, seniors when I was in an eighth grader part of the comedy world, right? Mm -hmm. Just had a dope ass level, man. I mean, look, look at you know, if you start naming some of the cats that ain't so, uh, you know, whatever. Like when you, when I first started being the DJ back there, you had like cats like. Uh, T Rex, yourself, uh, Owen Smith was coming through. Mike Epps was coming through. Uh, shit, uh, damn. I mean, I could just continue to name people. I, I, my brain is like, you know, whatever. Dion and them was little dudes. They was like sophomores when y'all was like maybe junior, senior level. Sure. But Corey was still. Corey just was an interesting talent. Like he mm -hmm. was the freshman that that made it to the to the senior basketball team type, you know what I mean? Because the Knicks is just so raw and and uh, unyielding to the women, even back then, that uh, he just stood out. But he was still, you know, you could, I got to see him take his lumps periodically because I was, you know, I was always in the back of the room. And so yeah. it was fascinating to me, man. And are you, how's your relationship with him now uh, over out there in Hollywood? Shit, my bad. Oh, who, who, uh... Corey. What, what's going What's wrong with your battery? You good, I gotta still? My, I got to plug my computer in. That's um, all. Well, I don't have uh, I don't have much respect for Corey because of how Corey treats his friends. Okay. I got that. Uh, um, I There's not one person that buys a ticket to his show that will trust him with a family secret. Okay. Uh, respect. So, uh, um, like I've, I've said on social media so I can say here, oh, yeah. If this helps you sleep, you're twice the comedian I am. You just not half the man. Gotcha, gotcha. I understand that. I understand it. Um, I don't know what I, I don't really want to touch that too much, man. Because oh, we can walk all over it. We can walk all over it. Let me remind you. Yeah, I'm from sixty twenty three South Damon. Oh, it ain't about fighting. And all you know that, what I'm that implies. Me yeah, either. yeah. I didn't yeah. mean that either. I mean, okay. Let me be clear about what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is the grand difference between me and Corey. We right. grew up in different Chicagos. Yeah. My Chicago was full of hardworking, honest, integral black men. Right. I was raised in a den of lions. Yeah. <laughs> so I say what I mean. I do what I say. Okay. I don't throw the rock and hide the hand. Right. I have, if I, yeah, I don't throw the rock and hide the hand. If I say it once, I say it again. No doubt, no doubt. So, now, are you implying that he does that? Uh, uh, no. Let me let me be clear again. Yeah. Uh, uh, my biggest problem with Corey Holcomb is fifth feminine conflict resolution. Okay, explain. He, move, he moves like a black. He moves like a fat black middle aged church woman. Ooh, which is one of the people had he criticizes everybody about Absolutely. Had everything about. Absolutely. Okay. He and no so integrity. he doesn't oh. he, he he no accountability. Okay, so let's he let's uh flat. integrity. Give me an example. Accountability. Give me an example. Okay, integrity. Yeah. If I loan you ten thousand dollars, yeah, and I have an issue with you, that's my issue with you, not the world. Okay. I was taught that by my father, by yeah. men. 
Right. Uh, uh, accountability issues. Yeah. Go see the Zoe Williams episode where I call Corey out on the carpet about what he said. And instead of that, he deflects to my talent. Yeah, you uh, Now, that's on Zoe Williams' show or that's on Corey's show? That's on Corey's show. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. on Zoe Real- Zo Williams' show. Oh, okay, okay. Because I haven't watched a lot of his show. I do watch 5150 oh, when it comes across bruh. my thing. You are missing out. Well, no, I, I enjoyed it when he was on 5150, but after he and Corey fell out, I didn't get any. His, 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 uh, his, his uh, algorithm don't hardly ever cross over me, okay. so I so I had to I have to seek it out. I'll just seek it out now and see what he's talking about. Because brother, was, brother was uh you know on a level of integrity. I know that that um fight with him and uh what's that Aries. dude? Uh, Ari Spears uh made a big deal. I had I don't I'm not really an Ari Spears fan because he he did some shit back in the day with me that I was like dude be, you know be a what a shock huh what a shock. Yeah, but still, after uh, Corey and your guy fell out, I just didn't get much from him. And then I'm also kind of Chicago loyal, too. So I was like, all right, well, Corey's uh, hypocritical edge does kick in, and it's kind of transparent at times, uh, you know, but I enjoy what the dude does. And I also enjoy how he's conquered Hollywood uh, by they have ostracized him, but he built his own market, man. And, and, and <laughs> you have to give him credit for that. If oh, not, let me, you know. let me well, to me, uh, what you're looking at is uh, what's the the closest cross, cross streets you're comfortable with sharing with regard to where you stay? Shit, 127th and Halsted ain't both okay. people out from my crib. Okay, 127th and Halsted. Shout out yeah. to the Italian Fiesta around there. Uh, <laughs> if you could guarantee yeah. every Tuesday night a nasty, bloody car wreck on 127th and Halsted every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Sure, you're gonna have some people who show up because they like fire trucks. <laughs> sure, you're gonna have some people that show up because they like seeing police cars and helicopters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mostly, <laughs> mostly, yeah, you're gonna have people showing up because they want to see a good old ground beef dead body. Okay, it's not that hard to draw a crowd for a car wreck. Okay, all right. Well, that's cool, man. Um. So you say you don't have any respect for him. Is that fixable, or are y'all just set in stone? I know both of y'all no. have these uh, strong lines in the sand type no. uh, personality. Not fixable. No. Uh, okay. So and it's okay. It's okay yeah. with me. Yes. Yeah, it okay. needs to be there. There are people who don't mix. Me right. and Corey don't mix. Okay. I, I uh, that. Uh, I don't. You know, I don't have any ill will for the man. Yeah. But uh, as you can see. I'm through letting him run his mouth on me without me shooting back. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, cool. yeah, I don't know. I have no interest in making shit up with him. Yeah. If Corey wants to make up with me, he got a long line of people to make up with first, starting okay. with his co hosts. Okay. His the past co hosts or his current co hosts? Because only all one of them. Darlene. All of them. Okay. Every person that you have outed about their, uh, uh, about something personal with them just to get a reaction. I have no I have no interest in speaking with or hanging around men of 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 that caliber because there's no other man in my in my circle like that. Yeah. I that brings that. into question the other oh excuse me. That brings in the question the other men in my circle. Right. Right. I don't I don't do that. Yeah. I, I run with solid niggas. I I don't that's I get at the heist man bro. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. stay over there with that. Yeah, that that's a that's a thing that I really um I don't pay attention enough to know that 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 thing about him and that that does disappoint me, man. I mean, but the dude has some levels that's already oh. disappointing. Okay, you know, I, I accept oh. that. I just you know, and I'm not defending. I have, I'm just. I have saying, a question for you. Yeah. Under the knowledge of all of these things, how does that affect your Chicago loyal? Well. Um, my integrity is always going to be like, 
Chicago behind him. Uh, but when it comes to something like uh, that, I'm going to yield to not being able to get close to him and trust him with any information. But if somebody asks me what I think about him, he's in my top 25 comics. The dude is a murderer on stage and he has his own style. Yeah, he he man, he mean to the women. But oh, well, they, love they love it. That's that's what that's apples and bowling balls. I'm not discussing him as a comedian. As a oh, person as a, as a yeah. comedian. Yeah, yeah. As a comedian, not even as a person. Yeah, yeah. I I don't take my manhood like that. Yeah, no doubt. I don't think any of us do. I think he thinks he's in the right when he do that shit, even though we would categorize the shit you talking about as some whole ass shit. Yes. But when you ask and, me about it, okay. And, and we're from right. Chicago. Right. This is where my man code comes from. Right. That's what mine is. This is and apparently the Robert Taylor Holmes has a different man code than 60th and Damon if he is the representative of it. Yeah, but he went to sin, bro. So he's not all about that. Uh, okay. Project uh, world, but I'm you know what? Here, here's what I want to say, man. Do you have any more time on right now? Sure. Or, I okay, cool. Got a bit. Okay, so we got about a minute and a half on this one. I'm gonna post another one. I'm gonna send you the link right now, so we can finish this because this is actually really good content. So. Cool. All right, I'm gonna cut right this one and then I'm gonna uh, start another one right now. Send it right, right to you. All right. <laughs>